Charles Swindoll has said, no matter what your past may have been, the future is brighter than you can imagine. Why? Because our God specializes in using broken vessels. That's his preferred plan. How do you go from broken to beautiful? There is a way. Robert came to his pastor and he said, I've been a fool. What a fool I've been. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. And he began to pour out this terrible story of embezzling, of adultery, of alcohol, all the rest. But he was broken. And that church, and we'll describe it later, restored him to fullness. But too often, when people are even broken, they have failed, they're broken. In our society, when something's broken, you throw it away. It's not, it's not useful anymore. But God does the opposite. He doesn't throw away broken things. He loves to mend them and make them better than they, than they were. But the breaking for people that have sinned, my friend Jeff, for example, which I'll come back to in a moment. So he's fallen, he's on the ground. Nobody's lifting him up, but God is working in his life and they, God breaks them. But it takes a lot to break some people. We have strong, stubborn wills, but God begins to put the pressure on and he loves us too much to let us stay where we are. And it's painful, but it's the best thing that can happen to a person is to be broken. Because the scripture says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. So what is brokenness? We throw that word around, what is it? Brokenness basically involves a death, a death to our reputation, reputations, our agendas, our pride, our self-protection, the end of self-will where a person has nowhere else to hide. He's not trying to prove anything, defend anything. He is broken before God and man. He's convicted of his sin by the Holy Spirit. He's not justifying, rationalizing, trying to hide anything anymore, but he has literally died to himself. I can remember there are times in my life, uh, I'm a strong, stubborn person, and God had to break me. And I can remember the death, it was a litter almost dying to myself. But that's when God began to work. And that's when God began to work in David's life. David says, against you and you only have I sinned, God, and done what is evil in your sight. And it's more than just regret over the consequences of sin. Some people regret that they got caught. <laughs> that's not repentance, that's not brokenness. Brokenness is not concerned that much about the consequence. They regret them, they're sorry for it. But most of all, they're sorry they sinned against a holy and a righteous God who loved them and gave his son to die for them. And, and yes, for the pain they caused other people. But a brokenness before God, a broken and contrite spirit God you do not and will not despise. And when somebody's broken, and that, that's the key, if a fallen person, sometimes fallen people are not broken. But if a person shows any brokenness and any evidence of repentance, that's the moment, that's the time when you can really move in and help them get restored, get up off the ground and getting moving forward for, for the Lord again. And I, I think we need to be very careful of judging people but when I, the minute I see some evidence of brokenness, I want to do anything and everything I can to help them, to lift them up, to make them whole. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. 
Brokenness occurs in a variety of ways. God has his way of breaking us. No matter how strong and stubborn our wills are, and sometimes it takes a long time and a lot of pressure before a person really breaks. But the moment a person, you see brokenness, any indication of brokenness, at that very moment is when we should step in and do all we can to help them continue on that road to restoration. Brokenness is the first step. There's no restoration without brokenness. There's the fall. Some people just will continue to resist and resist God and the pressure he puts on until the pressure becomes almost insurmountable. But other people are a little more sensitive and they start to break and you see that humbling, that repentance, that brokenness, then we help them. But what is a broken person to do? A person knows that he has sinned greatly against God, greatly against other people, and his sin has become public. What is the broken person to do? What are the steps they take? Now, what I want to share with you are not mechanical steps, but I think these are the components of what has to happen if a broken person is to really get right with the Lord and move on towards full restoration. And so I want to just outline these, but don't see them as just a checklist that a person has to go through. Now, these are too dynamic for that. But, but I'll state them in, in as clear a way as I possibly can because these are the things that I've seen a broken person do and the things that I feel biblically they need to do.